For Pride Month, I decided to do something a little different and create a list of movies I want to watch or rewatch that are either explicitly about LGBT characters or stories, or that have queer subtext which might have been caused by a number of reasons, with the biggest being the creation of the Hays Code. I want to still acknowledge that queerness and queer stories didn't stop just because they were censored. They only went undercover. And because I'm mostly interested in pictures produced in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, that unfortunately tends to fall exactly on the years motion pictures were bound by the Hays Code. So this list includes international films, as well as films from outside the confines of those decades. I chose to make this month's video a list, so that we can hopefully watch together and converse in the next video where I will be discussing some of the selections. After doing some research and asking some of my fellow community members what they think I should watch, I came up with this list which does not include some of the most classic movies associated with early queer depictions, like Some Like It Hot because, yikes, transphobia, or Rebel Without a Cause because we all know what that's about, or The Children's Hour because I need to keep my blood pressure at safe levels and I can't do that while watching this kid. Instead, I will watch my all-time favorites and some films I've never seen before. Disclaimer, I might butcher some names. Please do not be offended, I have done my best to Google pronunciations of names in languages I do not speak, and even some names in languages I do speak. Number one on the list is Rope, an American movie made in 1948 by Alfred Hitchcock, about two friends who are obsessed with Nietzsche who murder a man before having dinner with the man's fiance and their professor whose lecture inspired the killing. This movie is based on a true story of two gay men who committed a similar crime. Number two on the list is Miss Hanafi, an Egyptian movie made in 1954 by Fatin Abdul It is a light comedy about a horribly sexist and misogynistic man who accidentally receives a sex reassignment operation and has to break the rules set by herself before the transition. I have seen this movie multiple times, and it has very interesting themes, which I will discuss in part two of this video. Number three is Eight Women, a French movie from 2002 made by François Ozon, set in the 1950s in a mansion where eight women are suspected of killing the patriarch of the family. This is one I'm watching for the incredible cast, Catherine Deneuve, Isabelle Huppert, Danielle Darieux, etc. Four is Carol, an American movie made in 2015 by Todd Haynes. Two women fall in love in the 1950s and have to wrestle with the consequences of their relationship. This is one of my favorite holiday movies, but it has a very well-deserved place on this list. Number five is Victim, a British film made in 1961 by Basil Dearden. A barrister's nearly perfect life and career are threatened by blackmailers who find out about his gay relationship. As I understand, this is one of few movies at the time openly condemning homophobia. Number six is Different from the Others, a German movie from 1919 by Richard Oswald. In this silent drama, a violinist falls in love with one of his male students who threatens to expose his homosexuality and destroy his life. This film is believed to be the first film in history to advocate for gay rights as it was made in response to Germany's anti-homosexuality laws. It is also the basis for the movie Victim. Number seven is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It is an American movie from 1975 by Jim Sharman. Probably the most famous movie on this list, about a couple who get stuck with a flat tire and discover a mansion with all kinds of colorful characters. It is a classic, and I will rewatch it a million times. Number eight on the list is Les Amitiés Particulières, a French movie from 1964 by Jean Delanois. A young boy at a religious school develops a crush on his colleague. I have the same reservations about this movie, which I have yet to see, as I have about the next movie on this list, which is Death in Venice, an Italian-French production from 1971 made by Lucchino Visconti. Based on a novel by the same name by Thomas Mann, this movie is about an uninspired composer who travels to Venice to rest 
and becomes infatuated by a young Polish boy. The problem I have with both movies is that the age gap might be a bit too wide, and I will only have an opinion after I watch them. Number 10 is Machen in Uniform, a German movie from 1931, directed by Leontina Zagan. A young girl is sent to a boarding school after her mother's death and falls in love with a teacher who consoles her. I might have the same issue with this film, we shall see. There seems to already be a theme emerging here, but let's not judge it just yet. Number 11 is Funeral Parade of Roses, a Japanese movie from 1970, directed by Toshio Matsumoto. This film is an experimental art house slash documentary style film, loosely based on Oedipus Rex. It follows a number of transgender women in Tokyo's underground gay scene in the 1960s. Honestly, this time in cinema is not my favorite, but I'm excited to see this film because I know very little about queer culture and history in Japan. Number 12 on the list is All About My Mother, a Spanish movie from 1999, directed by Pedro Almodovar. When her son dies, a mother searches for the boy's father, a trans woman, who becomes the catalyst for a journey of self-discovery. Or so I understand. From the loglines I've read, this movie looks delightfully convoluted in the most brilliant ways. Number 13 on the list is Maurice, a British film made in 1987 by James Ivory. Set in 1909, Maurice goes to study at Cambridge University, where he meets Clive and the two men fall in love. This movie is a classic, tragic love story starring Hugh Grant. Number 14 is Olivia, a French movie from 1951 by Jacqueline Audry, where a young girl falls in love with her boarding school's fascinating headmistress. It's kind of ridiculous that I haven't seen this yet, because it is a very popular film in the old Hollywood community. And last but most certainly not least is number 15, My Beautiful Laundrette. It is a British movie made in 1985 by Stephen Frears, it is about a young Pakistani man who is attacked by a racist gang at his uncle's laundromat when he realizes their leader is an old friend of his and they begin a romance. I am very excited about the intersectionality of this movie. I hope you watch some of the movies with me and subscribe to see part two.